All right, here's lift talk number two. Uh, starting off with a few photos. This is Anthony and Peggy, Anthony and Peggy and David at the bar across the street. This is us in the hot tub um, after one of our days skiing. Anthony like a Greek god in the hot tub, and don't look at his junk. And me in the hot tub, um, and here we go. All right, it's Wednesday, our last ski day. That's right. And someone woke up at noon. Jesus, I wonder who that could have been. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so, so we're going skiing late <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> why don't you tell them all what happened? No, let's just let them wonder. <laughs> um, so, you know what the funny thing is, right? This guy's like, uh, he's like, uh, I don't know what happened this morning. And I'm like, I know. And his friends are like, what, what, what? And it's like you were a lazy asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a we had a nice dinner party last night. Would that you was say? incredible. Yeah, we had a chef come in. Can you put the pictures over the video? Yeah, part? I can do that. So, um, you know what we should do? What? Let's. Oh, so I put it on Twitter. I said, you know, we had a dinner party catered at Telluride, and for eight people, three people were cooking, and they asked us if they wanted if we wanted them to wear masks, and we said none of us are maskers, so we don't give a shit. And so when the guys showed up, I, they were happy, you could tell, not to have to wear a mask. Plus, they said all three of them had gotten it. I think in our crowd, I think five of us had gotten the, the, uh, the vaccine already. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Everyone who gets the vaccine is telling me they've had a horrible reaction to the vaccine. Yeah, I did. I'm not saying time. that I'm anti-vax. I'm just saying that. Well, yeah, I had it. I admit it. I admit it. For 12 I hours. Mean, I am anti-vax. I'm just not saying that. Yeah, I know. I know. And I'm not, I'm not saying the opposite, but... No. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but the guy said, I said, how many of your clients want you to wear the mask? He says 1%, like barely 1%. You are the 1%. Yeah, but the point is no one no one believes this bullshit. Everyone's like, don't wear your mask. We don't care. Well, that's not <coughs> true. If you go out and you speak to people on the street here in Colorado, they seem like they're really into it. Do you know what I want? Well, you know how they always say climate, <coughs> climate change deniers and what else do they call you? They call you a denier if you don't agree with them. I want to be like COVID data denier because when you look at the data it shows that lockdowns aren't effective and mask mandates aren't effective. So anyone who disagrees with us we just call them data deniers. Yeah, that seems to be quite successful. How about we call them liberty deniers? Well, deni liberty deniers. But they don't care about. They also like to say you're anti-science if you disagree with them. But the ironic thing about being called anti-science is, it's always when you're asking for more science that you get called anti-science. Can't have enough science. Yeah, I'm always like, can you give me some more science, please? And yeah. then someone calls me anti-science. I'm like, <laughs> I'd like, I'd like some more objective data, please, to prove. <laughs> that your policy is effective. Oh, you're anti-science. But I wasn't done talking about this morning because it was hilarious. Oh, so this morning, uh, what um, was hilarious? Well, I worked, I got up at eight and I worked and then still at 12, Kinsella's downstairs in a ski uh, jacket and helmet being like, eh, come on, Samarov, come on, let's go. And I'm like, I can't believe that I'm the one being blamed for us being out <laughs> <laughs> when I've been up hey, we can when I've, been shame, up, man. I've been up for four hours why didn't you go out with David and Peggy? I considered it but then I thought well the thing is I thought that you like yesterday you took forever to get ready to no. go mm -hmm. after you got I'm, up I'm a quick little so fucker. I thought it would be like yesterday but actually you were so embarrassed at being late up late that you were like snappy no I, I wanted to get some I'd skiing put, in yeah, on my last day I put skiing. some toast in the toaster not realising that you were, you were like you just out the you door. just meander around like a like kind of a random little I do sleep and that's dog why or something. If you got up at you're like doop nine, doop 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 doop. Up at half. So you were saying you're talking with our host David and Peggy, and uh, yeah. you're saying they were ranting about the liberal takeover of America. Yeah, and I'm I, I made the point that the liberal takeover of America. I don't even like it that you guys call them liberals. I, know, I, but, I like, but, quite, but I don't even like that they get called progressive either. Steps. Yeah, but okay. Progressive. Quickly, our thing about the end. Let me make the point. The okay. point is. There's something about the natural affinity or connection between conservatives and libertarians because when you talk to someone like that, they yeah. don't quite speak our language, but we can talk. But if yeah. you talk to a Democrat, like there's no common ground almost. I understand that, but I didn't think that was the case when I first became a libertarian around 2008, maybe somewhat like that, because I felt <coughs> like I was more aligned with the liberals. <coughs> Because they were actually, you know, against the war and against the surveillance state, the Patriot Act and all that stuff. 
But now the left have got so bad that I find myself finding way more common cause with people that I wouldn't have even imagined myself being aligned with 15 years ago. It's quite crazy. Fucking A. Mm. So, um, all right, well, we have to get up at, we're going to get off at, at, at the... Good left talk. All right, good left talk. Good in lifting. This is my poodle, Bella, getting spayed while I was uh, skiing in Telluride. Okay, we're discussing potential topics for this segment of Lift Talks, day number two. I uh, also your flat How about there. your body parts? I mean, your body parts are all over the place. You got your wanger hanging out everywhere. <laughs> You're farting all the time. I have had been suffering from all, some... all my all my 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 my, uh, my sweet chubby friends from Las Vegas would say. <laughs> You're farting because you're on a vegan diet. That's a problem, and you're not going to be yeah. able to get some chick pregnant. You're going to grab grow man boobs. <laughs> the funny thing is, uh, I only got the flatulence when I started observing the American diet and eating all this crap. Do you know what else I put on? Eleven pounds since coming to Houston, Texas. Now I don't want to lose all eleven because I actually think it was a little bit more than I wanted to be, but I do want to lose six of them. So I don't think it's the vegan stuff. I think it's all the bread and the fucking cheese and the uh, all the smelly, stinky. So let's recount our trip so far. First, Shit. you got to Houston. Uh, I picked you up and took. You, I said, "Let's go to Auburn." So you went to Auburn, Alabama. Wait, 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 wait. No, before that, we went out just chilling. We, you had a, we had a, you had a non-alcoholic beverage. I had one or two be- uh, rums. What was that? I picked you up in Houston. Yeah, what the night before we went to Auburn, we just chilled. And then we ended up, Where did we go? Remind me. We ended up at that deli. I can't remember. Oh, Katz's Deli, because you yeah. needed food. Yeah. And, and we got the worst we service. Just probably spoke for six or seven hours. Yeah, and you asked that black yeah. girl. You tried to get the phone number. That's the, hot, true. the hot black chick because you haven't had a. Hot. You have not had a black woman yet. That's true. You need, I was trying to get. You're you're you're, a, you're an ethnic female completist. I. <laughs> I'm still hoping to get a black bone before I leave. The thing is, you can't say oh, black that, what? Uh, black bone. Black but, bone. What does that mean? <laughs> bone a <of> black chick. <laughs> but the thing, <laughs> the thing is, you're not allowed to say that because apparently you're racist. But see, if you say I don't want to fuck black chicks, then you're also racist. Yeah. So no matter what you want to do. I was out the other night at the stand-up comedy, and I made friends with some African Americans, and I got baked in the back of their truck. Even though I wasn't smoking the weed, they just hotboxed me and I got really stoned. Anyway, the, the black chick there, she was a half black, half Hispanic. She kept on insisting that I had to bone girls of other races in order to experience the world. She sounds like my kind of girl. Like, she, it was her and her boyfriend. They were pretty cool and some other people. She's like insisted that I had to have sex with people of other races. It's like, fuck, she's. My, I should have told her to introduce me to her good looking friends. Sorry, I got. I, I, right, so I, I, I've never re- done talking about girls. Let's recap our trip. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was going to talk about rights theory. Actually, I'm not joking. Okay. But, What's theory? Uh, rights theory. Okay. Well, well let, let's first. Save I want to recount. So I pick you up. We have a night. Then you decided, kind of last minute, to go to Auburn with me. <laughs> so we I go to Auburn no a few anything. days later. Yeah, and, I met uh, lots of cool people. And we had fun. We met my boys Jeff Barr and Lee Glody and Jimmy Ohi and some other guys there. And I met some all the celebra- celebrities. Celebrities. Some celebrities. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention on the podcast my finest moment. I turned to Jeff Herbener and I was like, hey, this is funny because I know you, but you don't know me. And Jeff Herbener's like, well, actually, I've heard you on the Tom Wood show a couple of times. And I'm like, how does this motherfucker know who I am? And also, how does he recognize what I look like? Your voice is pretty distinctive. I know, but it's pretty nice that Jeff Herbener recognized me. I also had a little chat with Jeff. Yeah, we had a fun there. We had some nice dinners too. Remember that place we went to out in the uh, the place 20 miles away? Wasn't that cool? Yeah, I can't. One night the Thai soup wasn't too hot. Yeah, but the but the company was good. You don't go to Auburn for Thai soup, I tell you that. You had a friend that was like, you know, he's the shit poster of the group. It's really funny because I usually who's the shit poster? Was it Lee? Lee? Or was it Jeff? Jeff's not a shit poster for sure. It was the guy that always says stuff just to be obnoxious. Yes, Lee. Yeah, that's usually my role. 
But since, <laughs> since he fulfilled it since so you're well, in his, and you're in his country, I could top him. So I just let him be the obnoxious asshole. Oh, of the we, group. we met Roderick Long one night for dinner. That was <laughs> yeah. Nice. I invited Roderick Long around. He said he was first one in on Grata at Mises Institute. That was almost you, Stefan. You almost got kicked out of the Mises Club. No one can. No one can NPC me, motherfucker. No, no one can. Or PNG me. Who has been excommunicated apart from uh, Joe Stromberg, uh, Tucker? Why? Why is Joe Stromberg? Oh, there's a long story there. I wasn't involved in it. He and I were good friends. He went with me. He went to Korea in 2000 with me and Hans in that group I told you about for the Mooney Conference, which is another interesting story. And we were friends. And and then he got, he kind of, he got he left Mises on bad terms. I think something to do with his wife hanging around there too much. But I had nothing to do with it. I was like, you know, a lawyer in Houston. I'm not even involved. People love libertarian gossip, but I have to say, I wish that we could all just get along. Well, so, so Stromberg, like, he leaves, and a couple years later, I sent him a note because I hadn't heard from him in a while. And he sent me this nasty, horrible, nasty, vituperative letter back, like, attacking me for Whoa. for siding with Mises with his wife or something. And, and I, like, had, I had no idea what he's even talking yeah, about. You're like, motherfucker, I don't even know what's going on. Yeah, Obviously I'm just a lawyer in Houston, man. I'm not over there in Auburn setting policy and shit. Anyway, I don't really believe that Roderick Long has been excommunicated. I think he just thinks he has. I'm pretty sure if he sent a nice email. No, I think, he, I the, think if he sent the, nice the story email, he described okay. sounded like he got cancelled for that talk. And by the way, I got cancelled one time for a Cato talk. I got invited to a Cato talk about three years ago to do an IP debate. And with like, it was me and one other guy versus two other guys. It was two versus two. And I was surprised I got the invite because of the bad blood between Cato and the Mises types. I just couldn't believe they need it. To cut it the fuck out. And so, like, about a month before it happened, I had already bought my plane tickets and everything. And I bought business class, which they were only going to pay for coach, but I, I paid the extra, right? So I bought a business class flight. And then they, they said, oh, sorry, Stefan, we've had a change. We have to change, rotate the panel out. So we won't be needing you. Basically, they... Yeah, Cato cancelled you. No, I know exactly what happened. Someone in, higher up in Cato, the left hand wasn't talking yeah. to the right. They said, what the fuck? You're having Kinsellicum talk? you got to disinvite him now. And so they did it. Yeah, and then the guy that invited me was apologetic. So I didn't burn him in public, but I did burn everyone else. But but, but he stood like he that. stood in my place. But anyway, so There's I... There's a bunch of Cato guys that just won't go on Tom Woods' show <clears> because they're afraid of being excommunicated from Cato. And they have no problem with Tom Woods, but they just don't do it because Cato are mental about oh, no, this I, factionation. I remember what I was going to say. They weren't going to pay for anything, but I said, okay, I'll come up anyway. I'll pay. I'll go there on my own dime. I was going to pay for my own way. So I booked my ticket. And then when they canceled on me, I said, well, dudes, I already bought a fucking ticket. So they paid me. They re they reimbursed me for the ticket I bought. <laughs> so basically, Kato would not pay me to go, but they paid me not to go. That's Literally. Hilarious. Isn't that funny? It's amazing the things that you find out in left talks. Yeah. So sorry, I didn't mean to get... Um... But we're talking about Roderick getting uh, yeah, cancelled. I like Roderick, and also I think he's quite an original thinker. I do think he has some weird views culturally, which I don't necessarily agree with. But that's not really um, grounds for discounting some of the fantastic work he's done. I, I don't think anyone has done that. Mm. I know, but they should let him at Mises because he's a good speaker. Do you think I should rejoin his journal? I mean, his institute, the C4SS? Why not? I quit it because Kevin Carson wanted to said he wanted to behead corporate executives. And since my wife is one, I didn't want to really endorse that message. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's funny. I can't believe that your wife is a heartless, greedy, capitalist <laughs> shell who's bleeding the blood of children to feast her fiendish appetite for blood she let me go skiing with my buddies that's, that's not true. too heartless she's pretty cool i know she was cool on the phone uh stefan was like yeah so should i stay out a day longer and she was like you can if you want i don't need you around here whatever you want enjoy yourself <laughs> babe <laughs> she's like she's most like, most guys when a wife says that they're suspicious of like yeah, mm, what the hell did that mean really in the process of clearing the condoms out the best <laughs> <laughs> from her other visitors. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Cindy. She, as soon you. as we hung up, she got on the phone. She goes, hey, you can stay another night. <laughs> Why is she getting on the phone if he's staying? Maybe he's out at work. Yeah, so anyway. She's not going to cheat on, cheat on me with a loser. We did all burn she's going to cheat on me with a guy with a job. Yeah, that, uh, that works more than four or five hours a week. 
Yeah. Freaking lazy. Who's not poor? How do you say poor? Poor. Poor. No, say it. Say it. The it's Scottish funny. Word. No one understands. Say it. The Scottish poor. word. Huh? Poor. People what are you, pe what are you petting people. a fucking cat? <laughs> All right, so we have to dismount. Jerry, this is a long wait, wait, fucking lift. What's the end of the? So we did all burn Alabama. Oh, and then we came back, and, and I actually forgot I was going skiing like a week later. But well, you know, I, I guess it did occur to me because I didn't. I, 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 I assume I there's no fucking way you know how to ski. A middle class guy from Scotland. Are you kidding me? But so I just said, I'm going skiing. Do you happen to ski? And you're like, hell yeah, my dad skis. Well, at first I said. I didn't ask you if your dad skis, dude. I need to know if you ski. I'm not taking a novice again this time. I want to fucking ski. Yeah, that's the turn. And side. you said, yeah. I'm like, you're right. You are a wiry little monkey. <laughs> All right. See you guys on the next lap. All right. Well, that, was, that was a fucking awesome run, wouldn't you say? That was good. Welcome back for some less inside baseball and more just us talking about our lives. Um, well, I wanted to say something, though. Uh, Go on. It's so first of all, you predict this will be uh, a, a popular episode, but I, I don't like it. it could be a disaster, but we'll see. I think I'm worried popular. the audio the audio may suck because you don't speak up enough. I think it will be popular because if you do libertarian theory, every show does libertarian theory, but when you just chill out and chat, people are like, oh, I'm really getting to know stuff we can sell right here. Do you Speaking think it'll, which, will it rehabilitate my asshole image? You do have an <laughs> asshole image. You're not... The thing is, you're not as much of an asshole in real life as you are online, but you're still a bit of an asshole. Hey, which is a point. I posted some picture on Facebook of us doing our fucking baller shit, and someone asked... I'm taking a picture. Take your moggles, your moggles up. And someone, said, someone left me a comment, a cheeky fucking comment. What the hell? Can we not do one thing at a time? Oh, I'm kind of... Why don't you take your goggles off like that? Instead of being a bitch. Why are you being a bitch? <laughs> I don't know. I someone did. Someone gave you a hard time on what now? Yeah. He left a comment being like, Hey, Anthony, how do I get a skiing holiday with Stefan Kinsella? I'm like, motherfucker. No, you, I didn't say You know that. how? You watch this video. <laughs> this is the next best thing. I, I just left a comment like, uh, be friends with him. <laughs> like, why don't you ask Kinsella how you get a skiing holiday with me? Is he higher up? On... <laughs> That's how you don't get a ski trip with Kinsella by asking him to have a ski trip. I mean, Jesus, are you higher up on the food chain than me or something? Just because you wrote a seminal book on intellectual I do, property. I do miss my little, my little, my little, my little travel buddy one for. Oh fuck! So that makes me travel buddy. No, too. If, if he was here, it'd be it'd be like the trio. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be dangerous, man. Because you, you and he'd be out trolling for Poontang. That does sound like He's me. always got a, a horny eye. Like does you. he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not just my eye that's horny. <laughs> Thing. So uh, so we, so we let's continue our story. So we, we fly to Denver. And you <laughs> you decided to go the night before to see some people. Yeah, so I decided I, to go the night before, too. But then we never ended up meeting up because your boy, J.D., Bergeron or whatever. Bergeron, Bergeron, Bertrand, something, okay. some French name. He's a French dude. And so he in wanted, he invited me to tag along too, but then I was going to meet up with my buddy Chris Simino and also Karen Ann Harlos and her husband. And the guy said, I don't have room. I'm like, Yeah, no, it right. wasn't really him. It was his friends were coming over to cook and he didn't want to add two more people because he didn't know if they'd be happy And with I that. understand that. It's his at house. End, but it was end, stupid. I, we no, didn't need to eat that. Problem. We could have visited. We I, could've... Think, I think at the end of the day, actually... Um, they would have been quite happy to cook for you as well. Well, the thing is, dude, I didn't want them to cook you're making it sound bad. But no, I, it's not. It's just interesting. No, excuse me. I We did actually invite you to come over several times. And you were like, oh, I'm too tired. Oh, by the time of the dinner, I was too tired. Yeah, That's true. I know. But anyway, so we stayed at the airport hotel, which was which was convenient. Really nice. And fancy. then we, we almost missed we our fucking breakfast. flight. What did you think about the breakfast? It was... The guy was slow and American, and and do you, we had a quite a funny chat about cultural differences. As this dude kept on coming over and asking me if I was finished, and I'm yeah, like, while you're eating, one while time. I was eating, I'm like, no, I'm not fucking finished. Like the second time, I really snapped at him. He was like, I think I, you were justified to be honest. Yeah, I wasn't embarrassed. I, I, I think at you, the it, was, time, it was appropriate. At the time, you were like, okay, man, chill. But I think in hindsight, like he came over 
And he was like, are you... F I'm actually literally had the butter in my hand. Yeah, And I, I was about to spread it in the bread. And he was like, yes, yes, you're finished. And I'd already said... I was like, dude, no, I'm not finished. I snapped at him. And he was like, okay, okay. And then he heard me bitching about him to Stefan and he looked unhappy about me bitching. But these motherfuckers have to learn somehow. And Stefan was like, oh yeah, it's funny in Europe because it takes forever for the guy to come at the Italian restaurant to clear away your stuff. Whereas here we want to clear it up as quickly as possible. But for us Europeans, like I was speaking to my girlfriend or uh, about this prior and was like, but, but but don't let that. He, he's he's still available, lady. Just because he said girlfriend, he's still available. Don't forget that. Yeah, she she said um, uh, she was like, because someone brought the check and I asked if that was right. I don't know if they can hear me. When yeah, you do the that. microphone doesn't change, dude. Oh, okay. Uh, I asked her if that was rude, because that's rude in the UK, and she was like, no, they just want to make sure that you know that they care, they, they're on it, you're not leaving you waiting. Because in, in the UK, I feel like they were trying to kick me at the restaurant if they brought the cheque without me asking for it. Of course, we don't even call it the cheque, we call it the bill. So then we, then we, then we flew the next day, no, we flew that, we flew that morning to Telluride, but Remember, we couldn't find freaking Key Lime Air, so we almost missed our flight because we were scurrying around the airport carrying, carrying luggage for 45 minutes. Finally got on. Oh, yeah, that was funny. It's on the he plane. Was he was really stressing you. out. I, I was, was stressing out. Do you know what? But that's an example of where stress is good because it forced me to stay busy and find the solution. I don't know. I think you would be more efficient if you had got stressed. Fuck but off. I don't... Fuck off. Right, but here, here's what pissed me off. I looked at the departures on the television and I told him the name of the airline that we were going on and he continued to speak to the useless waste of space. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, we had him at four hours. I don't know, I never heard of Key Lime Air. Yeah, I don't know, I never heard of the, it. The staff in the airport like, were United people, like, I bought my fucking ticket from you. Yeah. Uh, you never heard of the airline that you gave me a ticket to fly on? Yeah, they're, they're completely useless. They're completely useless. But but Stefan still didn't trust me and still had to go. Because I still don't understand your reasoning. Guy. You found Denver Air. Well, did you see the flight numbers? That what it was? I went over to the departure screen uh -huh. and I looked down to find our flight. Yeah. And beside our flight, it said the name of the airline. Oh, Imagine okay. that. Okay, now I see. Imagine that. So anyway, we Just had a flight, easy. which was fine, except he almost got kicked off because he, the stewardess had to warn him three times, and she said, I'll have to report you to the captain. We already talk, told them this story. I know, talk, so I'm skipping over. So then we landed, and then his buddy, his buddy Lindsay Burgess and her boyfriend Hernan, who live in Telluride, coincidentally, picked very, us up and took us to the hot springs, which is clothing optional, and Anthony, of course, didn't have a bathing suit, so it went junk out. And uh, then we sat in the sweat lodge with the Indian man. I think we talked about the stolen, yeah. stolen. And, you do a good Indian accent, brother. Right, like, how, how you do it? It's like our forefathers used to bag stone and water. <laughs> white, but it was funny how when he said white men made us worship white religion, men. but then but, the white man made us thank God. We used to say, we used to thank stone and water because we are made of stone and water. And then, but he didn't seem like bitter about it he was like well white men made us he didn't he wasn't resenting the fact that white man made him worship god he yeah said, but he was just, he was just telling to, the story he was just trying to educate us yeah into the he was narrative. totally cool with it he seemed like happy all happy indian happy native american whatever you call but him but then now. the white man came. white men and he ate all the buffalo <laughs> what else did he do he gave us blankets with covid19 <laughs> So that's, Our people died of COVID nineteen. <laughs> he said that. Did he say that? When the white man came. Did he say that? No, I'm just. Oh, you yeah, I'm talking them. about when they gave them the yeah, blankets yeah. with the syphilis oh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. The plague, <laughs> the white man plague. So, so then we had a nice dinner. Peggy cooked us a vegetarian dinner in your honor, uh, and we had dinner with that, that other lady. Stayed and snapped at us for starting too early. Yeah. And uh, and well, then and well, then, see, and then we I was skied. waiting for everyone to start because that's how it was raised. But then the lady of the house started eating, so I started eating. I copied her, and the lady to my right, that fucking, what do you call people like that who interfere unnecessarily? Anyway, she was like, oh, you can't eat until David sits down. That motherfucker's cool. He's chilling. He doesn't mind. 
anyway, never plus, mind. by the way, I saw, you know, I've read actually etiquette books, and the, the rule in the etiquette book from Emily Baldridge or whatever, Emily Post, whatever, as soon as one person starts eating, then you, then you can, uh, then you can start eating. Something like that. I mean, you don't have to wait for multiple people. Well, anyway, I thought if it's good enough for the lady of the house, it's good enough for me. And if not, take it up with Peggy. Clearly, she's just a rude bitch. But the, the second, the second, uh, I like her. She, I, I like love she speaks Peggy. Her, no, I like the other lady too. She has, I like how she speaks her mind. She's quite funny. But uh, but then the second course came and she she snapped at me for or she scowled at me for not for starting too early. Now I've simply never heard that rule. Have you ever in Europe is that a rule where? Okay, I understand the rule, but when the dinner's first served, yeah. you wait for everyone to start getting plated you or whatever. You usually wait till everyone sat down at the table. Right, but but, but, the but thing for is, the second course, do you have to wait? Yeah, well the thing is, I've never heard that. the funny thing is, usually people go, oh don't wait for me, just start eating nowadays. Whereas I've been in a situation where my friend's family just All right, we gotta go. didn't give me permission to start eating. And Wrap I actually it up. Got to the Wrap part, it up, my brother. I thought they were the ones being rude. That's All right. what I'm saying. All right, bye. And now a few diversionary photo shots, me and T-Boy on the lift, and yet another of me and T-Boy on the lift, him doing his agape look. Back to the show. And now a brief video clip of us skiing, some glade skiing through the trees. Not too tight, but Anthony and I both did well. No wrecks just yet. I believe this was the Enchanted Forest run. And don't worry, audio listeners, this little skiing clip is almost over. final photo of Anthony before we resume lift talks okay we're on lift four now we're gonna go meet David and Peggy we need to find out we need to find out how to get to nine from here I think you turn left let's see nine nine I want to do some blacks hey do you speak German ich kann ein bisschen Deutsch no, say, du bist Deutsch? say no nine you're welcome warum nicht Okay, where's... No, dude, you're on the wrong fucking page. Turn around. That's the black of the ball. The back okay, ball. Okay, suck a dick. Not in your life. <laughs> okay. Lift four. Find four. Is that four? Yeah, there's four. Now find nine. Where's nine? Where's nine? Okay, so we're on four. Heading to meet Dave and Peggy over there up on the blacks on nine. And uh, I just had a uh, thought, you know, we're going back on Thursday, so tomorrow's our, today's our last day skiing, and I thought, what the hell, we're here already, we've got a free place to stay. Wife said it's cool if I come back Friday, so I'm going to stay another day. And Gregory's first thing, oh, I don't know if I can do it, I'm too poor. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> all right, well, you can, go home, you can go home early, then I'm staying. He's like, you don't think I'm going to be left out, you know I can be talked into anything, eh? That's not what I sound like. <laughs> No, what access is My that? My name's not Gregory either. <laughs> I keep confusing you with Anthony Gregory because I you're Anthony of sorts and I always call him Gregory. Can you just be Gregory? It'll make it easier on me. I don't like that name. It's like it's like when these transsexual transgender people want you to relearn a pronoun. It's like I'd like to, but it's just too difficult. So let me just go with my conventional my pronoun is master of time space in the universe my pronoun is Liss, like for libertarian his majesty anthony samro anywho it's like i just can't say no he's like i can't that that song from the musical i'm just a girl that can't say no 
except for I'm just a guy that can't say no. So you're gonna do it? To adventure. You're gonna do it? It was actually me who suggested it first yesterday, if you recall. You're gonna be like, a, yeah, I'm gonna have to juggle some appointments around. I do, I do. I, know. I need to move my clients. I, I hope they're accommodating. I'm gonna to have to work the weekend for you, Kinsella. I'm gonna oh. have to see people at the weekend. What's well, this crawfish boiler you want me to go to on Sunday? Oh yeah, a uh, libertarian that lives a little bit south of Houston invited us, and I thought- I'd Is it like at his house or something? Yeah, I think so. Will there be other libertards there? I don't know. Well, the thing is, I thought I'd actually bring you along as a secret guest. I said, can I have a plus one? So he'll probably think I'm bringing a lady. Actually, so I'm just bringing Kinsella. Well, let me ask you a question. Who is this guy? He's he's just he's obviously a fan of the podcast or okay. something. Okay. So and where and how far where does he live? Is this going on out in public? No, just how far from Houston? We're recording. Does, yeah, how far does maybe he live? Like an hour and a half in the car, maybe. Hour and a half? Maybe not that far. Are I you fucking know. crazy? Maybe it's only forty minutes. I don't know. I need to look on Google Maps. I mean, Maps. it's barely worth driving forty minutes to get crawfish, but if you add libertarian to the mixture, that makes it only <laughs> worth driving ten minutes. That's true. That's about as long as... There's like a positive tug and a negative tug. Well, it's definitely... You definitely only last 10 minutes with a positive tug, if you know what I mean. I'm hang, highly... <laughs> I'm, <laughs> okay, I would admit that was a little bit strange. <laughs> I was just trying to heavily imply that you masturbate for 10 minutes. Oh, is that what it, is that what it was? I didn't, I didn't follow your, your insinuations right, there. Uh, oh. All right, we're we'll go, we got to dismount. <laughs> dismount. That's, dismount. This, that's what she said. We got to stick the landing on this one. All right, bye. <laughs> All right, we're on the lift nine. It wasn't like, we're talking about the dinner party. It wasn't like intimidating fancy, right? No, that's one of the things I was worried about. Like, you know, etiquette. In the yeah. old days, when you were an aristocrat, if you didn't hold your silverware, sorry, I'm copying American. We you call it cutlery, of course, but you call it silverware. People would know whether you were an aristocrat or not by how you held your silverware. Or if you if you could be rich, but you might have just become rich, in which case you wouldn't know how to hold the silverware. And they would judge you. And I didn't know if there was all these protocols that I wasn't aware of that I should have been following. <laughs> but um, one of the, the, the girl that was there mixing the cocktails told me secretly and not to tell anyone that I was her favorite. So I guess I charmed her over. Unfortunately, her husband put a baby in her. So that's where our- Cheeky bastard. I know, it's okay, we're friends on Facebook. You already friended her? She friended me. You're so gregarious. I like to make friends. What's her name, Leah something, right? Yeah, she's a very lovely person. I don't mind being friends with by her because she's got a baby. I've had some friends before in the past that are kind of uh, well, actually, they're they're European. Well, people have already doubted your story when you said I had some friends before in the past. No, the emphasis is in the past. They know Steffi's a, fuzz, a lovable little fuzzball, like Rush Limbaugh. Yes. Anyway, um, it was actually my brother's ex partner, who was a Dutch ambassador. He was extremely arrogant, extremely socialist, and whenever we would go to a restaurant, we would start chatting up the help. He would get totally disgusted by us. Like, that, don't don't talk to the help. That's so funny that he was a socialist and he had that elitism, isn't it? He that's was also so anti-Semitic. He, he's dead now, so I can talk about him. But uh, I remember we were, I was in Capri with him. I remember Capri, Italy, 1999 or 2000. And uh, we were talking and uh, Madeleine Albright came up because she, wow. she, she was in the news and she had just, it had just been revealed that she was Jewish or something, right? Um, like she didn't know she was Jewish, but she just found out or something. It was in the news. And so Robert said something like, as if you needed, as if you needed proof to know that, or like implying that you could have just looked at her and known that, which is this hyper Jew aware European mentality. I don't know. I hear a lot of it in the U is it very, European? well, remember you and I were talking about George Beeson the other day and I, I known him for years. I didn't even know he was Jewish and you, you were right. So you noticed it and I didn't So that's a European thing. Yeah, I know. But also, you guys have your Judars up all the but time. The thing is I'm from a Jewish household. So I don't care. You always have a fucking excuse, so but I'm, I'm obviously more aware because uh, I'm always like notice when people are Jewish. Well, because... Europeans are more aware of it. And, and I think upper crust Americans are, but where I'm not upper crust American. Well, I'm self-made, so we don't give a fuck about what your background is. 
Yeah, and I like and that, that annoys some people, but I don't care. And no one cared at that party either. It was all in my head. I was like worried that. What party? The one we had last night. What do you mean? Like, I don't think I'm broke. I don't think I'm broke, but uh, I do think I'm the poorest. Sorry, the most impoverished person in Telluride. Oh, yeah. I am broke after this holiday, though. Well, Thanks a lot, Kinsella. No, the thing is, you live a modest lifestyle, but and you live hand to mouth in a sense, like you're always making your money, but you're earning money and you're living on it. And I like you're just living a modest existence. I love my life. You're just not accumulating tons of cash yet. Yeah, so people, by all means, uh, donate to Scottish Liberty Podcast or buy like a hundred copies of my book and shit like that. Take your take your goggles up. Let's get a better picture. Send here. your mother. Send your and to me for therapy. No, I'm keeping them down because the sun's glaring in my eyes. I just want to take a picture. Oh. Can you take a picture while you film? Yes. But my uh, hearts. One, open your eyes on three. One, two, three. Okay. Yeah, you can take a picture while you film. I can tell you, you didn't study engineering. No. What useless degree did you get? I, I mean, <laughs> I majored in music and philosophy, okay? Have you ever studied the Suzuki music teaching method? No. It's kind of like the Montessori of music. <sighs> I was a good piano tutor. The kids loved me. And that's why their parents loved me. But I prefer being a I actually felt like I was being bad when I quit teaching piano because I thought I'm very talented at teaching and I felt like I was doing the world as a service by not teaching piano, but I feel like being a therapist is a higher calling in a way. But I like being a good influence on kids. I like yeah. kids. Yeah. So, you can, so you, did Michael Jackson. Because <laughs> see if you're like a really good tutor or a really good teacher to a kid and you teach them something and you're nice to them, they remember you for the rest of their life as a positive influence, as like an adult that wasn't an asshole to them. Correct. I also like to treat kids like adults. Like I treat them as much as an adult as I can. But you don't treat me like an adult. <laughs> sure I do. <laughs> I just treat you like an adult who doesn't quite know how to... Uh... Wipe his own ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is all going on the show reel. No cuts. No, this is a blooper. <laughs> no, it's definitely not. How'd you like to ski down that motherfucker? Hey, look at this crazy dude. Look at that. Hey, look, he's that's not that. allowed. All right. We're, we're, let's let's ski sick. some blacks now, or as you would, as you would say, reds. We're gonna conquer some reds. Another couple of picks. I was trying to get Anthony to uh, raise his goggles and open his eyes, but the sun was so bright, so he rolled his eyes in a funny way. And here's a little, a little short clip of uh, of Anthony skiing, and I think Peggy too, with me filming. Yes, there we have it. Followed by a couple of Samaroff action shots, mid-ski. Yes, my beautiful iPhone recording on full display. And a cool shot on top of the mountain in portrait mode with a little fuzzy Samaroff in the background, and then with the background removed in a cool effect, courtesy Apple. Thank you. Okay, that was a badass run. That was amazing. A couple of single it's a, blocks. It's a run called Plunge, and if you're in ever in Telluride, I recommend you take the plunge. It is super. It yeah. is really, really good. It's nice and steep. Not many bumps, but you can take some at the side if you want. And uh, you can go really fast if you're skillful enough. Yeah, I am skillful enough. All right, tell them what just happened. <laughs> right, so I get these guys to go ahead a little bit because... <laughs> I just want to I just want to go at ridiculous speeds now. So Stefan's pretty fast, but his friends like to go leisurely and they're also more their forms better than mine. Anyway, I I thought I saw Stefan over to the side. So I I I skied up behind this guy and stopped. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> and I said, what up, you slut? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> He's American. Yeah, an American dude. That's like <laughs> what? <laughs> What's up, you slutty something? Yeah. <laughs> what up, you? <laughs> <laughs> well, how'd you say it? I said like loud? I just totally, totally matter of factly, like it was nothing. I was just like. What up, you slutty whore? <laughs> and what did he say? He turned around and he was like, Say what? <laughs> and then what did you do? And it was like, he was like, uh, it still, even after he said, Say what? It still took me a few seconds to recognize that this wasn't you. <laughs> and I just had to burst out, I kind of burst out laughing. I just apologized and I said, I'm so sorry. I thought you were my friend. You're wearing a similar <laughs> And it's like, it's like, my eyesight's not that like good. <laughs> I think he was ready for a fight. Say what? But, but also, I said it so matter-of-factly that it's conceivable that he actually misheard me. So I turned around and just skied away. I was laughing my ass. <laughs> so that was my entertainment for the day. Okay. Do you think I should tell David and Peggy? Sure. Why not? They're a little bit more conservative than us. Do you think they'll laugh? Uh, yeah, I think they're continually <laughs> bemused by us. Just because we're weirdos compared to them. Radicals. Anarchists. How can you get to that, like, that age and like you've never even thought or heard about these things? And like, they're not like hostile. They're like, well, I just never heard of that. I never thought of it like that. Like libertarian stuff. It's like, how can you be in your 60s and like, That's I mean, I'm not being critical. People, just, I know. I'm not, I'm just saying most people are like that. And like, but most people aren't that intellectually curious. I know. Why is that? Well, I think that usually it comes out of some needs. I don't know in your case, but in my case, like I had a crazy irrational parent and one that was, let's say, not open to reason. And even though they were fairly reasonable in other ways, once they had an opinion, they liked to keep their opinion. So I feel like I overdeveloped my sense of my reason faculty, my need for consistency to navigate that. Especially my mum, because it's like you keep on trying to figure it out so that you can avoid getting in trouble. And it's like, if you've got my kind of mind, like you amp up, you amp it up, and that doesn't work, so you have to amp it up more. And you keep on amping it up. But I don't know in other people's case, it seems the minority of people who are like determined to find out the truth, which makes me think that there must be either some events or an environment that creates that creates our tendency to want to look for it and then you go on from there like most of the really deep people i know are suffering or have suffered and i think that's because evolution doesn't make mistakes and doesn't waste you know plants and animals don't have organs and organelles they don't need being self-reflective is extremely costly. I got your organelle. It's extremely costly and energy inefficient. So why would someone be self-aware unless they needed to be? I don't know if you got the end of that because you're fucking around with your phone. I think the microphone can hear airwaves no matter which direction I'm pointing. Well, in. I'm dropping some deep shit here. I know. That's why I'm flipping it, like, to show the world it's flippy-trippy. Oh, I see. Eddie, your turn. Why do you think, why do you think you've got such a uh, over... Were you, uh, were you vaccine injured or something? I don't know if I was vaccine injured. I think I was vaccine injured. No, I don't think so. I think I was. Because if I'm injured, it's scary to think what I would have been if I wasn't injured. But maybe you're better. Maybe I am you better. Deliberately injure people so that they become libertarians. Yeah, I was bitten by a radioactive Rothbard. Well, that's what someone said on Facebook. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Oh. I don't know, but I'm. I think we decided to stay another day if we can work out the flights. Fucking a. Why not? For sure. 
for, oh. for show, motherfuckers. That's what I said. Not racist. Wait, what was way. that Moon Unit song about Valley Girl? It's like, okay, fine, for sure, for sure. She's a Valley Girl and there is no cure. Valley Girl. Valley. Remember that? I don't know that chin. Oh, well, I got to play it. All right, bye. A couple of more snaps of uh, me and uh, Anthony on the lift having fun. Okay, so you just said uh, you could do this, uh, this, lift, this run a bunch of times if it only had a high-speed lift. And I'm like, oh, poor, poor <laughs> first world. <laughs> the last night when Dave and Peggy were talking, they have a beautiful house in Telluride, like within walking distance of the gondola. And Peggy's like, yeah, well, we're on the dark side of Telluride. Yeah, she's like, everyone says it to us when we see where our house is. But they're like, oh, well, that's the dark side of town. I was like, that is the most first world problem I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Oh no, my beautiful several million dollar house uh, that <laughs> that I'm able to rent when I'm not skiing. It just so happens to be, oh, which is five minutes walk from the gondola, I should add. It just happens to be in the dark side of the town. Oh, <laughs> angels are crying. <laughs> Who are you? Poor Peggy, but we loved it. It was funny. She loved it. I know, I know. She loved it. I know. Girls like to be teased. Yeah. Girls just want to have fun. Someone should do a song about that. I know. All right, I gotta play it. Now I gotta play it. Okay, so there was a guy. St I stopped beside Stefan, or at least what I thought was Stefan, <laughs> way off the side of the feast. And I said, because <laughs> it was a uh, similar jacket, and I was like, what? <laughs> I can't even tell you. What did you it's say? so bad. I said, what up, you slutty whore? <laughs> Said, what? What up, you slutty whore? <laughs> what up, you slutty whore? And the guy, the guy turned around and went, say what? <laughs> <laughs> and it still took me a moment to realize that it wasn't Stefan, even after the guy said it. And I just, What'd you say? I just had to apologize and say, I'm sorry. I thought you were my friend. You've got some more jacket on. But I laughed. I laughed and laughed. And he was like, okay, okay. Like, he more or less gestured for me to clear off. But it was quite clear possible off. that he wouldn't under have understood what I said because it's hard to hear what people say. <laughs> I'll say that again. Yeah, it's like talking to. Sometimes Kinsella does this thing where he just goes off into his own world and you're trying to tell him about something, but it's like talking to a fucking wall. <laughs> <laughs> I used to live with a guy that did that, my friend George. He's a great jazz piano player and he's also an amazing cook. But sometimes he just goes off into George world and you're like, Hello! <laughs> and then, uh, and then, um, um, and then he gets annoyed at you for being like, Hello! Because <laughs> he thinks you're diminishing him as a human being. All right, so Let's we're done. Uh, we're, we're did you done. want to tell them, uh, well, them about the little misadventure we just had? Okay, so we're st we have to take the lift, the, the gondola home back because the lifts have all closed. So the line is crazy long because the idiots will only put one party at a time into the six-person so gondola. So sometimes a gondola goes up with... It's one got, person. It's got a capacity of six, so, so this is creating a bottle. What do we wait, like 25 minutes in line maybe? Yeah, properly. So this, this skinny girl wearing pajamas in front of us in line and her in a weird, weird kind of like... Uh, uh, what do you call that hair she had? Ah, uh, you know, Like gray dye in the front, you know, she was a... A hip, she probably she was kind of like a hip. The funny thing is, she's like the kind of new age hippies I hung around with in my early twenties, and used to have a soft spot for. But now, just make me dry, drive me absolutely nuts. So she, uh, she said, Anthony kind of got in her space, and she's like, "What the hell, dude?" And he kind of backed up, and she just, she, just, she goes, "Could you kind of give me some space because I have cancer, and you're not wearing a mask, dude." Yeah, she wasn't even like she wasn't even that. Uh, you said it quite like assertively and direct, whereas she was kind of more liberal, passive aggressive. Yeah, yeah, a little the bit. thing is, I got in her space because I thought her and her boyfriend were exiting the line because he basically went over the barrier. I was like, oh, sorry, I thought you guys were leaving the line. And she's like, she's like, I have, 
Yeah, she could have said, I have cancer as an afterthought. Yeah. And I turned to Kinsella and I'm like, I think she just lied to me. And I thought, no, because that's a pretty heavy thing to drop. However, she probably is a Democrat and they do lie. At the time. <laughs> then they'll, Kinsella they'll... turns to me and goes, why are you out in public then? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, if you, if you have cancer, you're terrified of getting you COVID. Be socially what isolated. the fuck? I guess you're risking your life for a gondola ride down to yeah. town. You should be social. You should be self isolating. Stop yeah. raising the case rate, yeah. you selfish yeah. bitch. We I mean, want it's bad that you have cancer, but don't make us live like we have it too. Yeah, I know. Why don't you just stay at home and die like the pussy that you? <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was gonna say, I had cancer last year, and I'm not. I, I wasn't a pussy about it. <laughs> <laughs> this is taking a pretty dark turn. But you know, it's just gal's humor. We like to make fun of people. It doesn't mean we actually. Yeah, but but to your credit, you then you gave her six feet space the whole I, time. Yeah, I, I stayed. Just in case she really has cancer. Do you know what? If she loves people wearing masks that much, then she should go to a, a, KKK a rally? ball. You know, one of those mask balls where everyone plays. Dude, I thought about buying one of those those uh, black black death plague yeah, masks well, that those, looks like the uh, that the doctors are actually wore back then. That those are awesome. Would that be cool to wear around? Yeah. Like someone says, oh, you could have like have it hanging on your back, and someone says, put your mask on, you can whip it out. <laughs> that line. Someone says, put your mask on, and you whip it out. In public. <laughs> whip out the mask, not whip it out. You whip it out in public. You whip it out in public. Earlier on, Kinsella goes, What was it that you said we were having a coffee? And you're like, Something, something. Let's. That wasn't really that funny after all. He was like, Fuck me. And I'm like, I like you more as a friend. <laughs> and it was pretty bad. It didn't really bear repeating, I admit. But these are lip talks. Yeah. It's a mixed bag. You get what you get. You get what you pay for. Yeah, which is... Here he mouths nothing. I guess I need to clarify. Well, what was the thing that I said when I said that I was heavily implying that blah, blah, and then you said something funny? Insinuating? Yeah. Yeah. In, in... Yeah. You can edit this bit out if you want. This part's pretty. Look, look how pretty. We're leaving tomorrow. We decided not to stay another day. Yeah, I can sell. Because I wrecked twice today. Bad. Twi the first time was really bad. It was on a black, and he just tumbled for ages. That was not good. I'll tumble for you. I'll tumble for you. And then the second time was quite surprising because you went. You just, what happened? You just went over your edge. Can you sing? Can you sing? Sing something good. I used to be able to sing. Just sing one song. Sing something I can join in with. You. Let's try it. I don't think that's going to be Let's successful. Let's try it. You start the song and I'll harmonize. Silent night, holy night, all is calm. It's a bit early for Christmas songs. All is bright round yon virgin mother I tried to harmonize but I failed. Holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. That was terrible. Ship. We could do a heavy metal version. We can Trent's not do that. I thought love was only true. There's, there's beautiful Telluride, by the way. Look how cool. What a nice little town. And poor Peggy lives on the dark side. She lives on the dark side of town, she does. Dark. She the dark side. The dark side of Telluride. The dark side of town. Tale, tales from the dark side of Telluride. Tale, tale, tale. Tales from the crypt. We think. We thank snow and tree. <laughs> because we are made of snow and tree. <laughs> if you think about it, tree have cellulose and we have cells. <laughs> True. <laughs> and the eagle flies in tree, nests in tree, and eagle is our symbol. Snow is made of water. <laughs> <laughs> we drink water. And underneath the snow is stone. And we are made of stone. <laughs> we are made 
we thank we thank Skilith we thank we thank we thank the ancient god of Skilith we thank the ancient god was called was called Gondola and white man stole the name of the ancient god and called his Skilith no but tell we were waiting in this freaking line and then the thing stopped twice and we were like what re- it takes one retard <laughs> what'd you say it takes one it's like all it takes is one retard to set everyone back and then you're like wouldn't it be funny if it was an actual retard like, and then I didn't like, know. I don't know if it'd be funny or not <laughs> everyone I mean, judged for- me even though I was just speaking right. generic. We have to dismount. We, have to dismount. we might have a final lift talk in the hot tub, but this may be the, the pen, penultimate clip. Sayonara. We thank YouTube audience. Stone and water audience. Aloha. Here we go. Every day he has trouble taking these infernaling boots off. Fuck you. Well, let's see. Ow, you mother... <laughs> this is your fault. If you hadn't filmed that, I would have hurt myself, you fag. We're not allowed to say that on YouTube anymore. They take videos down for the F word. Of course, you can call someone a complete and utter ass licking scumbag piece of shit who would sell his own grandmother for an uh, <laughs> injection of heroin from an AIDS infected prostitute. <laughs> you're gonna miss your call, you're dumbass. Allowed, you're allowed to call someone that on YouTube, but you're not allowed to call them a fag. <laughs> hey, you got your boot off pretty good this time. Yeah, you suck the dick. Well done. Well done on sucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> where are you going? Where are you I don't know, where are you going? Let's see what you're doing here. He's following me into my room. He does this every day. I can't stand it. <laughs> every time I hear his ski boots in the hall, I know something bad's c- gonna happen to me. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> please help. If you hear this, please help. You really have a talent with making your bed, I see. It's beautiful. Do you, have, do you at least have the decency to shut your door? Do you at least have decency to shut your door when you're jerking off? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, we're here in West End Bistro on our last night here in Telluride. Sorry, man. This will be the cap off of uh, our lift, our lift talks, I I lift talk number two. That's true. We didn't get in the hot tub, but you know what? It's very romantic. You can keep talking. The microphone's still working. Does it? I, he's taking me out for a romantic meal on our last night. It is. Yeah. Look, I have a mocktail. What do you think about that? I think it's kind of faggy not to drink alcohol. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Look, I'm drinking water. I don't even have a single alcohol here. So we skipped a nice dinner invitation from our host to have leftovers from our repast last night what was the word we, repast we were past leftovers never mind repast okay. so anyway I can't believe it and i decided not to ski anymore because i wrecked twice today and one of the snowmobile guys says you know when you start skiing for a few days when you have a ski you know a regular then on the third or fourth day, you start getting way more confident, but your skill doesn't go up, so you get more dangerous, and that's what happened to me. My skill went up, and I did The thing is, I know um, your friends, well, our friends, um, thought I was going really fast, but actually, I never go faster than I can handle, because as soon as I go slightly out of control, I kind of freak out and slow down, so. I thought it was really good. It was really fun. I love doing those blacks. Um, and we went fast. It was good. But See. Not, yeah, well, I almost fell as well, actually. Um, at one point, it wasn't when we were going fast. It was just when we were going a trail. That's when I didn't expect it. Some, the snow must have been uneven and my legs parted like this, like your mum's. And <laughs> I almost wrecked, but I, I, I managed to rebalance myself. When you least expect it, no, yeah. not even in a difficult. Pl- the second time you fell, it wasn't in a difficult place. No, I was just, just shaking like, from the first one. That sometimes happens. 
yeah so anyway it was good though i think i injured my hand my elbow my shoulder and my rib and my neck but other than that i'm fine <laughs> other than that you're fine. yeah any part any way we should conclude the well it's, it's i try to do a hot tub to have a hot tub conversations but I got in there and it was lukewarm. The heater broke last night, so. Well, who, who, who would have done that? Well, D David said he blamed it on a, a Scotsman farting in the tub. <laughs> hmm. I wonder who he could have been talking about. <laughs> when did a Scotsman climb into the tub? Never mind fart. Oh, uh, yesterday. And I have it on video. It was on yesterday's Lift Talks. You. How did you get, how did you video me farting in the hot tub? I didn't. You lied. <laughs> no, I said I have us in the hot tub. Anyway, this is Weston Bistro at the Hotel Telluride. Looks kind of, looks kind of nice. So we'll see. Yeah. You found a nice veggie option? Mmm, delicious. We're going to have some ramen noodles with all sorts of trimmings. And a chulambari? Oh, sounds good. And what else did we have? We're going to have share some... Truffle fries, that sounds posh. You know what that is, really? Hmm? There's, a, there's something called truffle oil, which is oil mm. artificially flavored to taste like truffles. So they just pour truffle flavored oil on it. Poor show. That's like fraud. Would that be legal in a libertarian order? Probably, because I, people generally know, or they should know. And if they don't, they're stupid. Yeah, you can't cure stupid. That's what my, my wife, well, my cousin Cindy Littlefield says, uh, you can't fit you can't fix stupid that's true or maybe there's another one of my cousins anyway all right let's peace sign up out. we're gonna fly out tomorrow peace out okay hey what what are you doing i'm sending my parents uh robert redford from the 90s tell you right yeah <laughs> yeah i just was i was just <laughs> we're at this coffee shop our last day tell you right i was just fucking with uh with the T boy here. I told him, I said, hey, Robert Redford's right outside. I thought he looked pretty young. To and be he, he, kept, he believed me. He was like, really? Seriously? For sure? <laughs> I was like, yeah, go talk to him while I'm using the bathroom. <laughs> I said, the most I'd do if I met a celebrity would be to ask them for a cigarette and pretend I don't even know who they are. But I've quit smoking, so. But you can still ask them for a cigarette. I can ask them for a cigarette and then throw them in the trash and say, I quit 10 weeks ago, how about you can't shut up, motherfucker? You wouldn't say that to Robert Redford because he's a respected actor. Respected by him. Just because he's respected by the Vox Populi doesn't mean that I respect him. He's a, he, he's, he's, he, uh, he has the Telluride, I mean the, uh, uh, the, that film festival in, uh, in Salt Lake City, what's it called, uh, <coughs> The famous film festival. Gay film festival? Sundance. Sundance film festival. No, it's not It's not gay. Oh, Sundance. Your homophobia is starting to grate on my nerves. <laughs> I like going home. Can you do the sign of the cross? What's the sign? Sign of, of the cross? Are you not Catholic? I can do it. Is it that? I, I don't, don't know. Like, if you don't know, I'm not going to... Much like uh, the Doobie Brothers, Jesus is just all right with me. When we did sign of the cross, we would say... Um, Domino's Pizza delivers. Get it? Yeah, but not very good pizza. I, don't, I still don't get like people good pizza. go to... No, it's fucking shit. Don't be a pizza snob. That's just it's ridiculous. It's garbage. Pizza Hut Pizza's Domino's. like sex. Good, good pizza's great, but even bad pizza's still pretty good. I disagree. Well, that's because you're Scottish and you're disagreeable. I don't think I'm that disagreeable. Let's go get a postcard for your parents. Yeah, I don't think I'm that disagreeable. Let's get a postcard for your rents and say goodbye to Lift Talk Coda. Goodbye to Lift Talk. Coda. This is me squeezing your girlfriend or mom's Bye bye, Robert Redford. <laughs> bye, Rob. Okay, this is uh, pretty much it for the audio version. Uh, this is just a final photo of us in front of the uh, the Christmas tree made of snow skis. And this is a little video from the Telluride app kind of showing. Uh, that we hit a top speed of 51.2 miles an hour at one point. Anthony may be a little faster. And then it kind of shows the map of where we went and traces our part of our path on on this, this final day of skiing. Um, so you can stop listening now for the audio version, but the uh, 
the YouTube video will show a little bit more of this to end it out. Sayonara. See you later. Thanks for listening. Anthony and I had a good time. He's uh, at his Airbnb in Houston right now. I'm on my porch recording this while editing this video on iMovie. And uh, we had a good time. And if it's well received, who knows what this will lead to in the future. Kinsella on Liberty, number XYZ, signing out. And Scottish Liberty Podcast, too. Bye-bye.